Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Look who we've got visiting with us and having coffee, Peter Mezit of Weston Nurseries. I always feel like it's famous because everybody knows and loves Weston Nurseries. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Perfect timing. Spring has sprung. Yeah, yeah it has. <laughs> so it's beautiful <laughs> over at your place. It is beautiful this time of year. Yeah. So okay. tell us what's, what's new with you. Well, <sighs> spring has sprung, so we go from zero to 60 <laughs> <laughs> right. every year. It just, you know, you know what's coming. You think you're prepared, but it's a challenge for our business every year to set it all up. Yes. Get the people back, get them trained for what they need to know this year, mm -hmm. and service customers. Because they come in as soon as it gets around 60 Work. degrees, yeah. and yeah. the grass looks a little greener, and the flowers start coming out, <laughs> the floodgates. I mean, are. I'm seeing, wow. I'm seeing yeah. mulch being put at everybody's place. Yeah. I'm so. smelling it all over town. I yep. love it. Mm -hmm. I flowers. like the smell of mulch. <laughs> you know, I'm already yeah. on the list of, okay, I need to pick up <laughs> Flocks, pansies, um, you know, the it's a treat to go there. Yeah. To shop. yeah. But um, you've done some wonderful things, obviously. And I first thing that comes to mind is the what do you call the freeway, the, the greenway. greenway, the greenway oh, here. The greenway project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's Finn Perry wonderful. and I kind of spearheaded that. It was yes. a chamber initiative. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that that area, that, I love that project because right. you came off the highway and you saw just kind of a barren brown. Field Nothing. look to yeah. it. Right? Weeds. Weeds. I don't even think I really noticed <laughs> it. Weeds. Just as a barrier for driving, and now it, it, you know it'll begin to look like more of a gateway. The structure. And, and that's there. the name Ken Driscoll. Actually, it was Ken Driscoll's idea um, mm. from Select, and um, so he was involved in the very beginning, and he came up with that name, Gateway uh, Green. Mm -hmm. so I mean, I also think I love the idea that you know Mass DOT has looked at this as an example for other communities, saying, "Listen, look what Hoppington's done. Look how they got all private funding and private yeah. companies to do in kind." and make this happen. What can you guys do off your exit ramps? And now they're going to these other cities. Is that really happening? That's really yeah. happening. I didn't yeah. even know that. That's yeah. great. Yeah, it and is. it's become the example of like, where, you know, what to do, what to be a welcoming as you come off a highway and stuff like that to bring people in. And it also gives some good branding for some very generous organizations like yourself and yeah. others. Um, yeah. So you guys started something the couple days before the marathon. I, that was one of the main reasons that we wanted to talk. And so why don't we share about something you've been doing for many years that yeah. hasn't gotten any attention. It, we, we, yeah, we haven't got much attention. We, not that we want right. the attention for right. it, but we're really behind the Jimmy Fund, okay. uh, especially the walk mm. that takes place, I think it's always the third Sunday in September. This year it's September right. 24th, if that's mm -hmm. the Sunday okay. I think it is. And it's an amazing event that raises close to $9 million. Wow. And Next to their Pan Mass Challenge, this is their biggest. And it's the biggest walk fundraiser in the country for a walk, period. So it is the Boston Marathon route. Okay. It starts here. It starts, it all starts here. Okay. People can walk the whole 26.2. Mm -hmm. They can do a 13.1 or mm -hmm. they can do a 5 or a 3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're trying to sign up 25 or 30 people to join our walk team this year. It's always oh, been wow. 6 to 12 people okay. on our team and mostly employees. So mm -hmm. we're trying to reach out. Okay. So to your the community. Walk team does the full 26.2? Uh, most of us do. Most of us do. Yeah. I've done it 10 years. My knees How are still a little sore from the walk? last one. Yeah, even just <laughs> the risk or whatever pace. What's the average? What does it take to um, if I walk with my wife, <laughs> I try to keep up. Okay. Yeah. She's extremely fast. She's done it 15 times. Wow. And uh, she's done it in under seven hours before. Wow. That's almost right. It's almost right. like you're running. Yeah. That's yeah. Very with her. Right. <laughs> wow. But they block the streets and everything, just like the they marathon. They do a great okay. job. It is so sponsored. The mm -hmm. Jimmy Fund yeah. puts all the money to the to the use, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the intended use. This is sponsored. Every two miles, there's all the food you want. You can burn 2,700 calories for this walk. <laughs> yeah, or you probably you gain 5,400 <laughs> calories more. if you want. You can just eat eat your way through it. Don't they actually, like, so isn't it each mile marker? They also have, like, pictures of children yeah. that you're actually, so it's like an inspiration for the next yep. mile. Yep. You see a picture of a, a lot child of kids, just getting A lot of kids, especially, but some adults, too, but they, they really focus on the kids. Oh, right. and sometimes the kid will be there. It's really inspirational. I had a child in the Jimmy Fund Damon Farber Clinic. Oh. And, you know, she's mm -hmm. great now, but... I can't tell you how wonderful a facility it is, how fantastic they are, how amazing. I mean, the superlatives That's all go. you hear when you have somebody and, who's close to it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So this walk is an incredible um, fundraiser for incredible um, service. Right. So, it's, so it's we're putting amazing. our money where our mouth is. We want 30 people. Okay. 
we're going to give gift cards if they raise a certain amount of money for Western oh. Nurseries to tie it into incentivizing so what is to raise it, what more is money. What is the <laughs> dollar amount that, that you're we'll looking do, for people to raise? We'll do fifty dollars. No, no. What, how much money do they want the oh, individual walker to raise? Three hundred is the minimum that they okay. have to raise. Okay. okay. But we pay for you to <gasps> sign up. Mm -hmm. You need to pay a dollar because you have to have your credit card on yeah. there in case you don't yeah, raise yeah, the yeah, three hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pay twenty four. You pay one. Mm. And then we, uh, if you raise wow. five hundred, we give you a fifty dollar gift card. Mm -hmm. If you raise a thousand, we give you another fifty dollar gift card. Wow! So it helps our business at Absolutely. the same time, but it's also right. for the right reasons. For the right reasons. Trying to raise no, but money. okay. You do things for the right reasons. It will help your business. You know, obviously that's how you yeah. think about it. That's so what that's we all right. Do. And yep. I mean, you guys are on the marathon route, and I think you've always had a huge crowd there. But I think this year you started something two days before the marathon to mm. really draw some attention to that to what you're doing in September. The Tree of Hope. And, that, and yeah. I, I wanted to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, let's talk about the Tree right. of Hope. So one of our marketing people thought of that idea. And um, so people can come into our garden center. There's uh, cans where you can donate $5. Mm -hmm. The cashiers ask, would you like to donate $5 and get a ribbon that we'll put on the tree? Mm -hmm. White is for somebody who's struggling with cancer. Mm -hmm. Yellow is somebody who's, who's deceased. Mm -hmm. So in memory of loved ones. Uh, oh. And we're hoping that tree just fills up. Wow. Um, we'll probably do it through June or July. Wow. That's so, and, and of course, you have the marathon statue right there on your property. With the sneakers. Is that the, the oh, sneakers. the oh, no, that's yeah. different. No, no, that's no. The bronze statue. The, 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 the uh, which is just it's new, beautiful. Yeah, New Balance paid for that statue in 2006. Yeah. It is um, beautiful. Um, the guy, uh, Achille Akitos. Yes. Mm, yeah. Stylianos Achille mm. Akitos, who won the 1946 Boston Marathon, the Greek hero beat John Kelly yes. yeah. mm. and uh, he was undernourished and he, mm -hmm. his country was recovering from World War II and it brought tremendous recognition mm. back to Greece. Greece and that statue is also in Marathon Greece so Hopkinton right. and Marathon Greece are sister so cities. cities. How did your yeah. site become the location for that? Uh, Tim Kilduff Tim. approached us, <laughs> <laughs> as always, right? right? Yeah. So uh, we're on They're the one mile marker, and yeah, it's right a good spot, the, and it would have been a, beautiful. you know, the, the common would have been a choice, but that might have been a little difficult to get it there. It's a crowded. Really perfect. A little you crowded. Do this, and this mm -hmm. way it gets its own recognition. Right. Right. And, and you get people who are running the marathon coming to see it and take pictures, so it's a great uh, Yeah, yeah. Huge amount of people there. I think Tim was leading tours this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's always on that truck with the, um, you know, the... Uh, the men runners. Yeah. He's yeah. behind there with BZ's yeah. truck. But I mean, the week before that, we um, did a ribbon cutting at your place that ah. uh, you hosted. Then mm. we opened up that Legacy Road. And it was nice. It, you know, it was horrible weather, but it was nice and cold. <laughs> but the. Um, we took you inside our greenhouse. Yeah. yeah. I think the neat thing was greenhouse. Um, one day last week, I decided to drive the road um, to cut up by Hopkins State Park. And on that road, there were two mothers pushing baby carriages, there were two horseback riders, there were people walking their dog, there were two young guys on um, rollerblades going up and down that wouldn't have existed mm. two weeks ago. Mm. Once that road was open, it's, and I know that those, maybe they live across the street from the West End, maybe they, they live over in like the, on the other side of Hopkins State Park in the preserve, but that the road is actually getting used and it was getting used for its natural resources. It's a long, winding country road. It's 1.3 miles long. All the development takes place, most of the development takes place on one side of it, right. where we all open space on the right. other side. So there will be a nice trail system. Mm -hmm. You know, that project has 500 acres of open space, so there's a lot of housing, we know that, but it's gonna get good use the way it should, like yeah. you're talking about. And as you like start to go up, and like where those first houses are being built, when you, no matter how many they put over there, the view is made. Fantastic. Mm. I mean, it's. No, you don't it, really realize until you get beautiful. back there to see the sort of the views that these homes will have. Yeah, and I, yeah. You know, my family's always enjoyed that land. It's you can see Boston from a couple of areas. It's, it's a couple of high. I don't know if it's high the highest point in Hopkins. I think Lumber Street might be. But it's highish, yeah, yeah. It's way up We've there. We've had that debate. <laughs> Mike, Mike Tristan says it is the water tower at the high school. And I'm like, no, it's Saddle Hill Rock. And it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, I'm not sure either. I know, I'm, I, know, I know early in the morning on Marathon Day when, you know, Channel 5's doing the news, they said, you know, they were talking about Heartbreak Hill and they the, the realized that, no, the highest point in the marathon is at the start. It's in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. And then you go down. You're 430 400 feet above sea level. Sea level. Right. And then wow. you finish. And Heartbreak Hill is, is half that. 
Yeah. Wow. Really? But it's just but the we're fact that down. it's so we're going like down. Yeah. But so they're actually starting at the highest point in the marathon. But that uh, too, yeah. so uh, you have the Tree of Hope. Um, I'm going to raise my hand right now, and I can't guarantee I'll be more than a 5K, but it gives me an incentive. I'm going to sign up. I'm awesome. committing. That's great. You know, and I'm hopefully some of our listeners out there will join me. <laughs> oh, we'll get the word out. <laughs> I'm a wimp. I will admit it. 5K is all I'm willing to commit to well, right now. If I can 5K do 5K with um, Live for Evan. Yeah. You know, Tim Lynn. So I know I yeah, can we'll do the, that. Yeah, we'll I would do love that. to do yeah. the 13 Am I hearing a sign up? I, Another well, one? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I just wasn't going to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so but, there's, uh, two, you know, there's two. There's two. That's the difference two. between us. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but I'm going to take awesome. you. Back. I will remember that. We'll follow along. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, I'll walk the 5K. I walk in September, yeah. but I'm not walking 26.2. Oh, no. I'm not All right. You guys and neither is Connie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure My goal is if I can do this, the half marathon. Yeah. That's that's I what I'm going to try. 13.1. Oh, yeah. That starts in Wellesley. Oh, it starts in Wellesley. Oh, it starts in Wellesley. No, I want to start here. Well, you got to start in Wellesley if you're going to do. You can oh, so stop. You can, yeah. you can. You can start. It's about raising money, so I you can go to Wellesley. I want to start stop. here. It's <laughs> fun going all the way in because it's just like when you finish the bus marathon. They have all these. No, well, well, I'll yeah. figure that out. You yeah, know. figure that out. You can pull a Rosie Ruiz. And <laughs> yeah, drive. exactly. That's what I think I'll do. I'll start here. My husband's <laughs> done the walk. Um, he signed up through a State Street Bank team many years ago, mm -hmm. and. Um, then um, Andrew and Katie did it two years mm -hmm. ago, and yeah. they signed up through something down there. Yeah. And um, it's hard. Yeah. It is hard. So you hard. get sore. Yeah, yeah. they came it's back. Not running, that's a lot harder, but yeah. you, you're so your knees. After your the 20th mile, you're saying, oh man, this is going to be hard. It really gets yeah. hard. Peter, yeah. what happens when oh, you sorry. cross ahead. the line? Is there anything going on? They announce you know? your name and. Oh, it's you know, a whole hoopla. It's a hoopla. Know, yeah, yeah, they, they, they do. They do a great job recognizing. And, um, you know, they tell you how many years, congratulations, you know, this guy's oh, walked. Cool. There are people who have walked, I think it's 28 now or 23, wow. I forget, but all 23 all years. Wow. What spurred your family to start this? I was My wife going did there. it. <laughs> I was at a bachelor party and she goes, oh, I'm going to do this Jimmy Fun walk. And I felt guilty because I was at a bachelor party in New York City and <laughs> she was walking and she said, you know what, I think I want to do this every year. And uh, she got me. She got me into it, and it was just so rewarding doing it. It really, it really is. You feel like you're really making a difference. Yeah. And, you know, what's more important than helping people with Absolutely. cancer? Absolutely. You know, I was going to actually go back in a little history, and I know that we don't have a whole lot of time, but, I, you know, you're, the Western Nurseries has been around here forever. It's been a family business forever. When did it start? And how, what got it started so many years ago? So it started in Weston mm -hmm. in 1923. Wow. Latvian mm -hmm. immigrants. Uh, my great grandfather and great grandmother. Mm -hmm. She came over after they married. Um, they built it up to 200 acres in two separate lots. And it's funny. Just the other day, I can go on to a website called historicalimages.com, and you can mm -hmm. see they must have taken photos, so like airplane, aerial? airplane, Air or helicopter, yeah. or something. And you can see the nursery with all the rows of trees and mm -hmm. shrubs. And then, mm -hmm. fast forward to a different year that was 38, I think. And then you go to 53, and there's the pike. Wow. So okay. they built the turnpike mm -hmm. right through the land that we grew oh. on. Okay. And uh -huh. for about a five or six year period, we transplanted the, the fields, literally bare rooted the trees mm -hmm. and shrubs and brought them out to land that we had purchased in Hopkinton. So wow. by 1959, it was all done. Wow. It must have been nothing going on out here in 1959. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. It was woods mostly. And yeah. the, the old historic pictures just blow me away. You got mule skitters. You got people. Yep. <laughs> getting the logs dragged out and the big stones with the bulldozers getting stuck in the mud and they just cleared it all mm. and put in miles and miles of soil drainage. The, conserv the uh, U.S. Um, soil Conservation Service mm -hmm. helped with the project mm -hmm. to make terraces so that the mm. water drained properly and we could grow plants in these fields. So five or six decades we grew yeah. on up to f I think 550 acres of fields it became and wow. uh, about 50 acres of container growing. It's amazing. Kid, uh, you guys have like, and maybe you still do it. I just don't see. You still almost have like barracks where you brought in people who needed, you know, work for the summer from different mm -hmm. countries, different yeah. places. Yeah. We had about for 250 housing. people that worked. Um, there were 50 high school kids every year until they didn't want to work anymore. Right, right, right. <laughs> Honestly, they, it wasn't cool at a certain point. Right, of course. They all wanted no. to work here when you know it was back in the 80s. Mm. when I went through high school. And then, uh, yeah, migrant workers from Puerto Rico mostly. We'd, yeah. we'd yeah. house 40 every year mm -hmm. in, in wow. what we call the dormitory building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So wow. tell, I was just going to say, you know, tell us some of the fun stuff because I know you hold seminars at the nursery, yeah. and so some of the fun stuff coming up. And this is spring planning, so I know a lot of people are out there thinking about their flowers and the vegetable gardens <laughs> and landscaping. Yeah, there's a lot of interest in. We surveyed our customers a few times, and we said, "What would you like? You know, what do you like about what we do? What do you want to see us do more of?" Seminars, events, workshops mm -hmm. were always at the top five. So yeah. we've we've actually hired a, a new guy named Bart Krug, mm -hmm. who's just fantastic. He's a seminar machine, an event mm -hmm. machine, a workshop machine. He just Is he the one comes just up with did the, like the terrarium one. He does terrarium. I wanted to go to that pansy make it. wreath. Uh, oh wow! Oh, we nice gotta start getting the word because I'd love to fun I projects he can do in yeah. forty-five minutes yeah, and walk yeah. away with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we tend to charge for the materials, of but the experience yeah. is priceless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the learning, which you learn to make a pansy wreath. Yeah, you, <laughs> learn, right? Right. You, you learn a lot. So we're just doing all sorts of things. Kokidama, kokodama. I don't even know what that what is, what is. I don't that? know what that means. It's like a moss ball that you oh. hang, uh -huh. and you can stick bromeliads or air plants or oh, plants fun. growing out of it, and it's just a new thing. Succulents are huge. Oh, the younger yeah. millennial, eighteen to thirty-five year old, yeah. group loves easy the care. Easy, easy care. Right? Easy care. You don't have to water them that much. Are some of the succulents what they're also referred to as like the air plants. Yeah, that's the yeah. Tillandsia and yeah, for millions. Your family's fairly famous for some branding of some plants. I know the PJ. Oh. Yep. Yeah. I tell everybody what that is. I mean, I we kind of know, but the audience may okay. not know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that was my great grandfather um, hybridizing. Um, a small leaf rhododendron from China with a native one from the south and when you hybridize you have to wait to see what all the different seed population turns out and you pick that one because it looks good or it has good foliage yeah. and then you vegetatively reproduce, reproduce that one if you think it's a winner mm -hmm. and you see how the 50 or 100 that you produce come out and you say that nah, wasn't a winner. <laughs> That's a winner. So there's a lot of losers but the PJM was a winner. So it's a special, um, is there a special rhododendron? It's a small leaf rhododendron. Okay. What he was trying to do okay. was produce more plant material to make the New England landscape more interesting with mm -hmm. earlier bloom time. Yeah, yeah. And later bloom time. So he focused on the small leaf rhododendrons, which bloom in April, mm -hmm. and the deciduous, we call them summer azaleas, that bloom mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. June and July. And so we've got hundreds of introductions, but the PJM is the most well-known. It stands for yeah. my grandfather's initials. PJM. Peter, is, is, it, is it also your initials? No, I'm PW. Uh, <laughs> so um, from what I remember years ago, that that is actually made, is one now one of the most popular rhododendrons in all of New England. It's one of the most popular plants in the country. And um, wow, that you don't even realize that how many of it has come out of here and that it is in a lot of our yards, it's in my parents' yard, it's in my yard, and stuff like that, that you don't even realize it's, it's everywhere. Isn't it kind of a lacy small no. uh, flower, the, the PJM? Well, the ro rhododendron trusses, have, you know, they're, they're, they're big yeah. flowers. The, the small leaf rhodes are smaller, baseball right. size or But smaller. the PJM, what does it look like then? It's it small leaf. Yeah. It actually has mahogany, okay. very scented leaf in the mm -hmm. off season, okay. and then it's green during the growing season. Okay. It's mm -hmm. like a lavender color flower. Gets six to eight yeah. feet tall. There's a, another version called Checkmate that's a dwarf sure. version of PJM that gets four feet tall. Oh, wow. So there's a bunch of these small leaf rhododendrons. There's one called Landmark that's red. Mm -hmm. Olga's very well known. That's my great grandmother's name. Mm -hmm. uh, Olga Mezid is another one that's very well known. Well, that's a pink. Did you, did you love this stuff as a kid? I mean, when you grew oh, up I loved with it. it, yeah. I miss the fields. <laughs> I miss working in the fields. I started at a very young age. Mm -hmm. I have a hard work, I attribute. Yeah. What I think I have is a hard work ethic to my Working farm yeah, type yeah, sure. exactly. at a young age, and exactly. farm, we try to work. keep that going with the whole yeah. staff to this day. Well, I like the fact that I can go in there and um, have a discussion about what will survive in our climate and what's on the border of the zones, because certain things are Possibly. really robust. And like butterfly bushes, I know that every fifth year I'm probably going to have to replace them, maybe, mm -hmm. because they probably will freeze out. It'll be too harsh. Yeah. Um, 
but I've learned to reseed them and they just grow they up. They seed in. I know. Well, I, yeah. I do that. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I yeah. just pull the foot. But they're Tiny a woody, soil. Very yeah. perennial almost. Exactly. They die back down like I And you cut them off and, 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 and every now feet. and then the top part will stay intact, yeah. but you just cut yeah. them back. Yeah. Yeah. They're a little bit of maintenance. Yeah. That plant. But, I, but, but now you cite that as an example. They're more fragile, but then the other things that I can plant that I know are just going to yeah. thrive. What's the best thing for uh, piney, shady areas? You just mean a like in a pine grove and yeah. planting? Yeah, so well, so just in our, our acidic yard. Acidic soil. Of, yeah, acidic yeah. soil, and very yeah. acidic soil, and hardly it's nothing grows. The, the, road, the, the road rhododendrons, the, the large leaf rhododendrons like some shade. Mm. Dappled sunlight is better than 100% shade. The, okay. the mountain laurel. Uh, and mountain and then if you have deer problem, oh, the yeah. best is um, Andromeda, Pieris. Uh -huh. These are three broadleaf evergreens that keep yeah. their leaves on year round. Thank but you. the Pieris doesn't isn't deer food. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good tips yeah, deer over food. here. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So, Sorry. I mean, popular now, too, is it, it's people pe picking up crab apple trees and um, blooming cherries and things like that. Oh, yeah. Do um, they do well here in this soil or the climate? I yeah. guess they do. Yeah. 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 Anything we sell is going to do well here. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, people respond to what they see looking Blooming. good in the landscape. So right. Pisithia Blooming. right now. Everybody wants Pisithia. I love Pisithia. We yeah. ran out the other day and <laughs> I said, what the heck? <laughs> what I, I mean, and, and, and once you have them, you can't get rid of them if you I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I love right. them. I love um, That's the first sign of spring. It seems to be yeah. popping up all over the place yeah. here. Even though, like, you know, the fields have been developed and some things have changed, you guys have also done some expansion. You have a second location now. Mm -hmm. Really? Um, and that's Helps north. Right. Chelmsford, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and do they do, is it a do they do the same as here in Hockington? Or? Same thing. They're uh, half wholesale, half retail. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Wholesale is actually a little bigger part of our business. Selling to the oh, trade, right. selling sure. to the landscapers. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot of people who say, do it for me around here. And yeah, right. want to hire a landscaper. <laughs> uh, but Chelmsford's the same thing, um, but a much smaller. It's about three acres. And this site is about close to 20 acres down here. So we have a big outdoor sales area in Hockington commercial or wholesale at the back, mm -hmm. retail on the road front. Um, but we have a pretty small store, so there's mm -hmm. a future and we're going to be looking at building a bigger store in Hopkinton. Meanwhile, ah. Chelmsford has this big store, but okay. they don't have a, a lot of outdoor space, so How'd their sales are more the hard goods and the lawn and garden. How'd you end up picking there. Chelmsford as a second location? We were looking around mm -hmm. and, um, um, you know, certain towns were identified that would make sense to have a second location. Chelmsford has the and right demographic, demographic, it's the right distance away. Mm -hmm. And this garden center was started by somebody who didn't really know too much of They were more of a, um, a landowner, <laughs> okay. landlord type. <laughs> and they tried to run it, and they had some trouble. So we, s they, they, we lease yeah. it, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a okay. long-term well, lease. Yeah. Well, so we didn't have to build it. It was already perfect. Yeah. We moved in. Great, so it was a good great, opportunity. Great so, so is a lot of annuals already starting to go out, or is it too early? Uh, we've got, um, oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, Pansies, of course, mm -hmm. uh, osteosperm are there now. Uh, we're bringing in the geraniums this week. Yeah. So Get this patience. has been a good spring because mm -hmm. we're looking out always two weeks ahead and guessing and it's going to get below freezing. Yeah. It's been a good amount of rain. So uh, by Mother's Day, and this year Mother's Day is late, so even before Mother's Day, all the annuals will be in because yeah. we, don't, we don't worry about frost at that right. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Well, don't go away, but we probably have some shout-outs to do about what's happening in town. Don't go away. <laughs> We've got you strapped to the couch. Um, <laughs> Tethered here, though. I'll stay. I'll well, <laughs> my coffee's not done yet. <laughs> I want to do a shout-out to something that the Real Housewives actually sponsor, and we actually sponsor the Hoppington High School robotics teams, and Hopping Kinetics is actually in Kentucky as we speak right now and through the weekend um, at Worlds in um, Kentucky, and they're competing against other so our logo for real housewives um biogen the hoppy and high school um are all on this robot competing in kentucky right now so that's kind of fun and it's oh, the world so, so does there, there include other countries con other countries not oodles but what i'm hearing is yes um, oh canada's there there's england um, hopkinton rocks so mm. hopkinton is it the just one team, one, made team. One, okay. one one high school team made world and two or three of the middle school teams but it's kind of neat that you know the team that we the we sponsored all the high school teams. Right. So one of our t one of our robots has our logo and is out there at Hopping Kinetics. Oh, good. And I mean I think it's also fitting that you know Peter's here today and tomorrow is Earth Day. Oh. Yeah. And so you know, okay. it's you know a chance to start thinking about your gardens and things that are going on. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening coming up in the next couple of weeks with, you know, cleanups and.
town wide cleanups, lake cleanups, whether Trail it's Mass cleanups, Monaco, yep. Whitefall, mm -hmm. those will be out. I mean, but um, a lot of what's going on this next week has to deal with, you know, the local town environment, whether it's know your vote at Hopkins High School with um, getting ready for town meeting. You know, there's the meet the candidates night here um, next Wednesday night at HCAM. Um, HCAM will also be doing the know your vote. And then the very next morning after meet the candidates back here at HCAM is um, the state of the town. So that's the town manager. And that's also on HCAM, um, school, school department, things like that. Kind of saying, you know, what's happened this past year as we go into town meeting. Um, so that's a lot of what's happened. Next week is a very busy week in town. Yeah, Spring absolutely. is so busy for everybody. Isn't <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I know everything that, builds up, and you know the kids are back from s spring break and everything else. So the school traffic will be back on again. Main Street. Yep. And I, mm -hmm. in this past week, I could actually see it lighter, <laughs> knowing that the you know the high school kids weren't driving, their parents weren't driving. Them all, right. over, mm. all over, all of a sudden, Boston, I could get you know thing. I live um, by Sandy Beach, so to get you know across town, I was like, wow. Mm. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's a lot of what's going on. I think you know. Weston just had the Easter Bunny. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was popular. That was popular. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do that again. I, saw a bun I saw bunches of baby pictures popping up on Facebook with the yeah. bunny from your yeah. place. Yeah. Well, yeah. I also love that Snappy Dogs is there. That's just yes. a fun place for oh, Snappy like Dogs to be. Great. To yeah. get your hot dog and be in a beautiful the setting. The problem is that wind blows right into the garden center. Mm. <laughs> you have to go over there every day it's and eat Absolutely. Too tempting. And are the trains running already? They are. I love the trains. And then you used to have some petting animals. Yeah, we don't have. Well, no more goats. Yeah. Goods, no more goats. Right. yeah, they went to a better place. Uh. As in, they're still alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, but Peter, thank, thank you. you so thank you so much for being here. We really enjoy talking thank to you, and, getting uh, to know we'll you. We'll post up the link for getting onto the Jimmy Fund, too. Great. Oh, Absolutely. thank you for your support. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Possibility. It starts early, before we even know what it is. Thanks to people who make it happen. Together, we are possibility.